Hello everyone, I am Toriar and welcome to my newest Hearts of Iron 4 video. Well, let's move that screen a bit. We will be playing as Hungary, because I want to see if Austro-Hungary, the only proper way to play Hungary, is still viable in no step back. So we will of course have to take over Austria and then try our best to take Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia and so on and then grow our empire. What exactly will happen later? Well, you'll see. Also, I have been toying with doing non-historical or random focuses lately. Uh, for this video we are going historical, but do let me know what you prefer. Full historical focuses, just unhistorical, or if I set everything to random manually, because you can do that as well. Then it's much more random, of course. And thank you to the person who pointed out in the comments that unchecking historical is not the same as setting random. But before we begin, we have a returning sponsor today. This video is brought to you by the one, the only, Raid Shadow Legends, the game that first brought true console level experience to your phone. When I first tried it, I was surprised my phone could even display such graphics. In the game, you have over 600 champions to choose from. All of them have unique skills and you can build your team, develop them, equip them with artifacts and lead them to victory. Now I'd like to show you a couple of champions you might like. The first one is a Necrit the Great. He buffs his allies, he can debuff the enemy and he has a cool looking helmet. And the second one is Syl of the Drakes. She has a wave stun, passive healing and she can even revive. But the coolest thing about her is the abs, I mean the fact that you can get her for free. And that's just two champions, there's over 600. This month is raids third anniversary and the celebrations are going to be huge but while we wait check out something new raids first ever champion skins the skins let you alter your champion's appearance to something that suits your style and preference the skins for the arbiter are already available and i think i like the jade one the most this is the best time to get started in raid if you haven't already and if you click my link in the description or scan the qr code that is on the screen you'll get a free starter pack priced at almost four $40. And that's three free champions at once, Misericord, Tiger Soul and Romero, 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews and 10 Spirit Brews. All of these rewards will be waiting for you in your inbox over here. The rewards will only be available for the next 30 days, only for new players. Click the link or scan the QR code and check the game out. Okay, back to Hearts of Iron. As I said, we're playing Hungary and we'll see if Austro-Hungary still works well in No Step Back. Regular difficulty, and remote historical focuses, let's go. Now, of course, there is only one proper way to play Hungary. The only path that is worth taking is Austro-Hungary. So let's immediately do balanced budget. We have a small army due to the Treaty of Trianon. We will be fixing that. Speed the game up, unpause, and let's go. Also, let's purchase some steel. We want to do a referendum in Austria to annex them. We could theoretically take Austria by force. This way we could get out of the Treaty of Trianon quickly but I prefer to capture them peacefully. And then protect Czechoslovakia is very tricky because we need to time it with the man Sudetenland from the Germans. Balanced budget gives us political power. Let's strengthen the monarchists and hire a silent workhorse. Or maybe I should take Austria by force. Still not sure. Elect a king. Normally I would hire the staunch monarchist because we will be staying on the line forever, but we have this modifier and it should be enough to keep us safely non-aligned. So let's get the captain of industry instead. Extra stability. Let us invite the Habsburg prince. And the wonderful thing about it is we'll get extra political power in a huge amount and be able to justify war goals soon. By the way, let's do improved work conditions. Wonderful, we have our Habsburg. Now time to take over Austria. In order to do this peacefully, we should reintegrate the railroads. So, industrial revitalization. Free trade, please. Let's stop the trade for a moment because I want to create an agency. We will be missing steel, but I want the spies. Computing machine and reintegrate the railroads. Now we need five upgrades to the agency to get an extra spy. Political support is growing very slowly, but it is sufficient. Let's promote this guy. He's our level four general. He can become a field marshal and draw some more generals. They may come in handy later. Spies immediately go to Germany. Also time for an elusive gentleman. Did I say gentleman? Yes, he's an elusive gentleman. Why not? I need a network. I need to know what the Germans are doing. But railroads have been reintegrated. We can now demand a referendum in Austria. Let's also improve relations with them. 
if I remember correctly, if we have the railroads and the good relations, there's a 95% chance of them accepting to become part of us. Oh, we now have six free factories. Let's spend one on steel and use the remaining five to keep upgrading our agency. Actually, everyone go to Berlin temporarily because we need to start infiltrating stuff. Let's put our troops on the border, although uh, that won't be necessary. Austria should submit. Right, got the good upgrades and infiltrate civilian administration. We demand a referendum. A referendum succeeds. We get Austria for free and all their troops too which basically doubles our army strength. Next up, restore Austro-Hungary. Get all those cores. Also, time to start getting some army experience. Regrouping expert. Austro votes to unite with Hungary. Next up, Czechoslovakia. And the third spy is almost ready. We will pretty much only be building civilian factories for now, because we have a terrible penalty to military factory construction speed. I could take steps to get rid of that, but once we go to war, it will disappear on its own. Offense expert, please. Austro-Hungary restored, which means more cores, which means more manpower and factories, effectively. 34 factories already. We can finally afford the steel we need. We can't protect Czechoslovakia yet, they will probably not accept that. We have to wait for a proper time. And a proper time will come when Germany is about to take Sudetenland. And to know when exactly that is, we'll need our spies. We will be going to war relatively soon anyway. We don't have enough intel on Germany to know what they're doing. And this will be crucial. Let's go to partial mobilization. We have a lot of political power. Normally I wouldn't do that because we'll go to war economy when we go to war, um, but we get so much political power that it's not really a problem. Agent captured, sadly. Let's support urbanization too. We need to monitor what focus Germany is doing. For now it's synthetic rubber, it's fine. The one we're looking for is army innovations too, because in this scenario they will usually do it before Sudetenland. I should probably make some templates. Let's make the tiny kitten template for deployment. It's going to let me get troops into the field faster. Then let's modify our basic infantry template to be 10 width instead of 12. That should be sufficient. And finally the mountaineer template. Let's duplicate that too. So it's consistent. Call it mount 10. And do we want to keep the engineers? I guess so. Let's switch the mountaineers first. Can't make more mountaineers for now. That gave me some manpower I can use to deploy the rest of our planes. Oh no, I've deployed everything. Now the rest of you go to the 10 infantry template. And I'm gonna make a lot of tiny Hungarian kittens. Actually what I could do is just switch all of you to the kitten template temporarily. We'll lose the experience, but that's not a big deal. So we can have enough manpower to train and deploy all these guys. Just prioritize them over reinforcements. We've done support urbanization. Let's see what the Germans will be doing. Army innovations too. Okay, so that's exactly what I expected them to do. I tested this a bit. So now we do not take a focus for a very long time and monitor closely what they're doing. See, we want to finish Protect Czechoslovakia here, right before they finish Sudetenland. We could be doing that simultaneously with Sudetenland, but I'm not sure it would trigger properly. We might get Czechoslovakia without Sudetenland. And I'm pretty sure if I do it the way I plan to do it, everything will be fine. And will also be safe from the Germans. Right, troops deployed, I won't need more than that. Now, take all the small templates. What is the biggest template I have? This infantry template 4. We take all the small ones, switch them into infantry template 4. That means a lot of battalions in the field. Let's let it update for a moment. Now, how many new mountaineer units can I train? Thanks to that. Eight. So let's select eight of those infantry units and switch them to mountaineers. Now take the rest and switch them to the 10 with infantry. Almost a full army group. Actually, that's probably too many troops, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, let's keep watching Germany. Okay, this is the tricky part. They're doing re Oh no, they're doing research re eastern claims. I made a mistake. Huh. I made a mistake. I thought they were going to do the Mans of Deathland now. It's fine. If they're not doing it now, they'll do it next. So what I'm going to do is Institute for Industrial Techniques. We will finish it before they finish their focus. And then we'll do Protect Czechoslovakia. We will still be able to do it before the Germans do it. It's all good. Now, do I have enough support equipment to add recon companies to my template? Yes, I do. Surprisingly. Let's do that then. Our military factory construction speed is still dampened by the Treaty of Trianon. Um, but we will get enough military factories from annexing Czechoslovakia. Which is why I'm fine with just building civilian ones for now. Hmm, I can technically use the engineer company, but I don't have it researched. 
Well, let's get the cars for now. Research start complete. It's all good. The Germans should be doing Sudetenland next. Essentially, Czechoslovakia will refuse our offer of protection because they're strong enough to resist us. But if Germany is doing Sudetenland while we finish our focus, they'll be afraid and prefer to unite with us. Well, Germany seems to be exceptionally weak in this particular playthrough. Now that I've set up the proper timing of our focuses, we can keep doing different focuses. It's not a problem. Just need to keep watching Germany so we do protect Czechoslovakia at the proper moment. See, we start our focus faster than the Germans do, which is why I delayed for around 60 days without a focus. Well, 70, but because but 10 saved, it, it's fine. Of course, the time is not wasted, because in the meantime, Czechoslovakia will be building up their industry, which we will inherit. I guess I could, now that I have a stronger economy, actually invest in our spy agencies. Let's get an infantry equipment designer and industrial concern. So we do want to keep some political power saved up. Now we can do improved worker conditions again, let's do that. Your program complete, let's see what Germany does. They should have enough troops by now to do Sudetenland, yes they do. So will they do Sudetenland? Yes, okay. So we do protect Czechoslovakia. We'll of course finish it before the Germans do, since we have 10 days saved up by this point, and Czechoslovakia will become ours. Now I don't need the spies in Germany anymore, because I'm planning to prevent them from attacking us over Sudetenland. Where we plan to send them is Romania and Yugoslavia. Now if I were to add support artillery, how much artillery would I need? Too much. Then again, I will soon have the industrial capabilities of producing enough. You know what? Let's add support artillery. Just duplicate it so I can go back. 10 infantry, support and artillery. Save it. Also, professional officer call, please. Switch you to that and produce some more artillery. Let's say five factories for artillery. There is actually enough world tension for me to justify a war goal already, which we will soon do. Oh, right, I forgot. I should also improve relations with Czechoslovakia. I don't remember if it matters. It does matter for Austria. I don't remember Czechoslovakia. Why do you hate me? They have claimed our territory. Yeah, don't worry about that. We have completed the focus before the Germans completed theirs. I can't see theirs anymore because I moved the spies, but theirs will conclude. Whoops, I just made a terrible mistake, didn't I? I need to know when exactly their focus concludes. When exactly, the exact day. Uh, no matter, it will conclude on the same day this does, because they all take 70 days, so I can use Poland's embargoed economy to learn about Germany. But I should have kept the spice for a little longer. Now, I will not accept this yet, because if I do, the Sudetenland event will trigger for me. But there's a way around this. See, I'm going to pause for a few more days. I'm monitoring Poland because they have... Uh, a modifier that gives me uh, civilian intel, so I know what focus they're doing. This is very important. If you don't do it the way I'm doing it, Germany will attack you over Sudetenland, or take it from you. The focus concluded. Germany has com completed Demand Sudetenland. We would see it if I still had spies, but they just did Demand Sudetenland. Now, the proposal was sent to Czechoslovakia, but before they can accept or decline the proposal, I annex them. See, and the proposal will bounce off. If I did that earlier, we would be asked for Sudetenland. If I did that later, we would probably get Czechoslovakia without Sudetenland. And now we get the best of both worlds. Also, 74 factories. Now I have two options now. We could do these two focuses, claim Transylvania and march to the shore, and then justify a war goal on Yugoslavia to attack them. Or I could just justify a war goal on Yugoslavia to attack them because these focuses would give me um, a core here for quicker justification. I guess I'll claim Transylvania so we can maybe get some cheap territory from Romania and I will also justify a war goal on Yugoslavia right now. This will give 7% of world tension so there shouldn't be any new guarantees but just in case I will also improve relations with France and with Great Britain. We also inherited Czechoslovakia's troops. Yay! It will reinforce my units Reinforcements incoming. Oh, right. Uh, before it happens, let's also deploy the planes we got from Czechoslovakia. And they did have a lot of planes. As you can see, we have not received an ultimatum from Germany. Let's improve relations with Romania. Perhaps they will be willing to give us territory. Appoint our field marshal. And see, normally Germans would ask me for certain land. But because I did what I did, they can no longer do that. They did the focus and Czechoslovakia disappeared. So they will be denied this territory. They can, of course, justify a war goal on me, but they will not have a focus war goal on me. How's the manpower situation? 
Mm, not good enough. I might want to disband some troops. Okay, what I'm going to do is go down to four armies. I might need these troops later, so I'll just switch them to the small kitten for now. No, I'll just redeploy them. Disband. One army gets disbanded. Four will be sufficient, and they will be better equipped. How are my spies doing? Well enough. Ah, I forgot to keep improving my cryptology. So, to sum up, we've taken Czechoslovakia, we're safe from Germany, and we're free to expand south, because there's no new guarantee on Yugoslavia. Now, with this, we might get Transylvania for free. Romania refuses to give up Transylvania. Yeah, let's flex our muscles a bit. Hopefully the world tension doesn't go up too much for Yugoslavia to get in guarantees or something. What of Ribbentrop? Yeah, we are behind schedule because Germany wasn't, you know, doing stuff. Uh, who should mediate? Who likes me more, Italy or Germany? Italy likes me more. Let's approach Italy. Oh, we can do it twice. Let's also approach Germany. Maybe we'll get to two events. If that happens, we can choose the better one. Now, march to the shore, not necessary anymore. It will give me some cores. I think I'll get those anyway if I, mm, if I click the decision down here to reintegrate the empire. Civilian industry. Let's see what that mediation gets us. Let's also research engineers. Oh, I forgot to produce trains and cars. That is an oversight. It could be problematic. Transylvanian compromise. Okay, let's wait a moment. Maybe we can get another better event. Much more time. We will get North Transylvania from it, which is better than nothing, but we want everything. Okay, no double event, apparently. We get North Transylvania, which will make our assault on Romania a little bit easier. Now, let's have a look at our supply lines. Not really that good. Two armies for Yugoslavia. And two armies for Romania, who guarantees Yugoslavia. The armies for Romania we will not activate yet. Get in position and show me the supply situation. Supply situation is not good. Okay, we still have some time. Let's reorganize the railway system and build supply hubs. We can do three. Let's get one very far in here, and one here, and here. We still have a long time before we attack. Assign generals. We got all the field marshals from annexed countries, so we can use these too. The ones with offensive doctrine will have extra attack points. Let's give our guy offensive doctrine as well. I was holding off on that because if Germany attacked us, defensive doctrine would be preferable. It'll take a while before they get supplies. I'm going to lower artillery production. This is enough. Invite foreign investors. Let's see. No foreign guarantees, except for Romania, which is perfect because we want to fight them anyway. Now, without Czechoslovakia, Germany should be pretty weak. They might all have a hard time taking Poland and France. Our main problem is lack of manpower. Once we go to war, I will of course increase manpower laws, but that's still going to be very little. We have to be careful not to lose uh, the manpower we already have. The supply situation has been remedied, everyone's well supplied, and the war goal is about to be ready anyway. Let's assign our planes. Just activate everything and focus on Yugoslavia. Also, more ground crews. Okay, Italy joins the Axis, not my problem. Germany attacks Poland. Poland joins the Allies, and let's see if Germany can actually manage to do stuff here. Well, of course they can't do Germany. But still, I wonder if they'll have an easy time in France. Regardless, time to declare war on Yugoslavia. And Romania will join in. My troops will not be advancing in Romania. We don't want to do that yet. They have a good defense. We'll first take Yugoslavia and then attack Romania from all sides. Now we're at war, we can change our laws. Rather, we will be able to in a moment when Treaty of Trianon is removed. We can go straight to... Oh, can't do war economy. Well, maybe later our army gets weak and we'll be able to. But we can go straight to extensive conscription. Uh, maybe some war propaganda. And fight. Mobilization will take time. Yeah, we do have to worry about the losses because we're not getting manpower to reinforce those losses. I should also set up garrisons. They are low priority, but... Uh, Let's make sure to set them up anyway. One cavalry unit. And do not waste manpower on that. Just use it to conquer stuff. The garrisons will soon not be necessary. Bold attack. And let's see how we do. Maybe some micromanagement is in order. If we can get behind enemy lines. Which looks like we can. Hey, Yugoslavia is much weaker than we are. Romania will be an issue. They have joined the war. But we're not attacking. They're not attacking. It's all good. Cut them off from supply, please. Do not let them move away from these tiles. This way I'll surround them and they'll be dead. It might work. You run around and get victory points. I could go for aggressive, of course, that would ensure that we're attacking where we want to be attacking and all that, but the losses could be too big to handle. 
Okay, maybe you can cut them off. That would be good. Okay, they have no supply. Redo the orders a bit. Run around, get victory points. German pressure towards the Benelux. Poland still defending. Romania trying to strike back, but failing. Although, do I really need to kill these people? No. I just need to keep them contained. So what I'm going to do is only leave half of this army here, sending the other to the southern bit, and only activate the ones down here. You guys do not fight. Just keep them contained. No need for them to die, because this will be my manpower soon. How's our manpower? We're mobilizing. And getting around the enemy. Can I just use this one soldier to win everything? I might. Oh no, they're chasing him. Quick, save the guy. He's been cut off, but he might still take their capital. Oh, you go there. They just don't have enough troops to cover a front line so large. And all of their troops are here. Hm. We touched Romania. Did not plan to. This guy might be in trouble. Run to Romania. But there's just one guy. And they're getting closer to capitulation. Sadly, I did not decrypt their cipher in time. Can we take this victory point? Maybe it'll help. Will you surrender yet? Full of war, so, so Germany is weaker, but not weak enough. Okay, I guess I need to take Ljubljana. They have no supply here, so we'll get it. Oh no, they surrendered. Good. So that's Yugoslavia. Take all states, of course. And now we can focus on Romania. This bit here will be less defended. Let's concentrate our forces there. We're also activating all the orders and transfer our air force to take care of the Romanians. Go. How's our manpower in the field? Good enough. Should you guys just go directly for their capital? You will encounter some resistance. A second group take a road next to them. And you can just go between, apparently. Okay, looking good. Should be able to manage that without too many losses. Go around, get Bucharest. We got Bucharest. 68% towards capitulation. Now hold it and get the victory points. Now hold Bucharest and get the victory points next to it. It's going to be quite easy if we don't do something stupid. Make sure we're not surrounded and all that. Oh, actually got dog counts. The Hungarian Admiral no longer pointless. Move on, get the victory points. We got the spearhead into the center of their country. 98%. Almost there. One more significant victory point and we win. And we have several available. And we win now. Now what I'm going to do is take all states. And now we should be able to reintegrate the empire. Giving me a lot of cores on all the territories we've acquired. Anyway, now we prepare for further expansion. France is still standing, which makes Germany easy pickings. Well, Poland is still standing too. Maybe we should go after Italy and Germany. First though, I need more manpower. Let's send our spies to Germany, because they're the most dangerous. And spear firepower doctrine, please. Actually, before we do that, military theorist. I wasn't able to go to war economy. Well, perhaps if I checked later, we would be able to, but probably not. Uh, but if we're fighting someone like Germany, we will be able to do that. Superior firepower now. Germany is attacking the Benelux. We are neutral and big. You know what? We might actually not want to fight the Germans. We might want to ally with them against the Soviet Union, who are at some point going to want our territory here. That might be the prudent thing to do. Because Germany should have no quarrel with us. We were the first to guess Austria. Yeah, I thought this map would show me core territory, but it won't until the resistance declines. But uh, all the bits with the green markers where the resistance is declining are actually our core territory, so everything will be okay. We now have a big state with lots of manpower and factories. Let's build it up even bigger. I think we'll benefit from getting good infrastructure in all our core places. Hmm, infantry expert. And we can make you an advisor. You guys, disperse around the country. And now we can prioritize our garrisons. USSR gets Poland. Yeah, we should really be wary. If they demand Bessarabia, we are ready to defend ourselves. Might even want to fight alongside the Germans for that. Whoa, what's going on? Exactly what we were worried about. The Soviet Union is justifying a war goal on us. 150 days is plenty of time, though. Let's go to a full army group. The Soviet Union should still be weak, so we don't really need to worry too much. Actually, let's make one additional army for garrisoning ports and stuff like that. France is gonna die. Is it, is it my problem? Not really. I might intervene if it wasn't for the Soviet Union. Let's research signal companies. It's finally time to invest in some military. Let's have a look at our supply near the Soviet border. Could be better. We should definitely connect the railroads. I don't think we'll need forts. We might need a supply hub over here. Mm, this should do it. 
I'm getting concerned. I feel like I'm only getting the half the manpower. See, my manpower in the field is half a million. My total manpower is a million. What I'm hoping is just a temporary thing and it will stabilize. Exercise, please. Let's modify the mountaineers also to artillery and recon. Turkey, no, we do not want to invest. Still have 120 days, that's a lot of time. France is gonna die soon. Oh well. All right, manpower is finally starting to look proper. We'll probably go to two full army groups, not just yet. Let's make sure we have one full army group and a garrison army well equipped before we get any more. So the mountaineers didn't work out. Ten with infantry with support and artillery then. Although the garrison ones don't need support and artillery. We'll switch that in a moment. We don't have a lot of ports, but we do need to keep them safe. Let's get you to the Soviet border and see how the supply situation is. I have so many trucks I'll be able to do signal companies soon. Increase support equipment production and build more military factories. Should probably invest in Air Force soon. France capitulates. Now, when the Germans start fighting the Soviet Union, that will be tremendously helpful to us. They should stay neutral to us. There's not that much else to do in our focus tree. We can get some nice bonuses from army stuff, so let's go there. Let's make you into an offense guy. Maybe when he reaches level 8 we'll replace the one we have. One more thing. Duplicate this. Remove the support. Change symbol to the tower. And make a defensive reserve unit. Let's select suppressive barrage. And then smoke and fire. We still have some leftover tanks. And we do have a lot of them in reserves. Should probably even modify this template. To use more actual tanks. Although they're very weak, aren't they? I think the light tanks I have are just not properly configured, so it displays this super low soft attack. But we do have some of them. Yeah, this will work. Just to use up the equipment we already possess. Finland rejects Soviet demands. Will you fight two fronts? You might want to attack both us and them. Anyway, that is enough exercise. Get ready to fight the Soviet Union. Latvia got eaten. And Germany is moving into Norway. Well, Joseph, I'm ready for you. Soviet Union declared war on Finland. I'm next, most probably. Ah, that will be fine. Shall focus completed. Their justification is complete as well. War is coming. And they declare war immediately. Okay, my ports are garrisoned. Oh, right. I did not do this properly. Just the ports, please. Maybe ports and coasts. So naval invasions shouldn't be a problem. Air stuff will be a small problem. Turn into Van Mongolia as well. Come on, attack me. You don't want to, do you? Well, we're both at a disadvantage if we choose to attack, because mountains and rivers are here. Let's research anti-air. Looks like we have a lot of time, I might add anti-air to our units. How's the industry? Slowly moving into building military factories. Yes, Finland, you can dock in my ports, I'm not sure why you would want to, but you can. Unless you're just running away, which is good as well. We could build a faction with them. I could send an army to help them survive. Then again, I'm not sure there's anything to be gained from it. Oh no, actually there is. I could get Turkey involved. That would put some pressure on the Soviets. Who else could I create a faction with? Bulgaria and Greece. Greece is dangerous, because Greece is likely to be attacked by Italy. But if I get Bulgaria, they could help me a bit. And Turkey. Let's start with Turkey. I'm going to create a faction with Turkey. The dawn of Hungarian puppets. Turkey has agreed to join our faction. Now Bulgaria no longer wants to. So I had to choose either Bulgaria or Turkey, because we're at war with the Soviet Union. But Turkey is more useful to me, because I can send my troops here. Now I can invite Finland. But if I do that, Turkey starts fighting. Let's first have troops ready. I forgot to send my spies to the Soviet Union. Although they have very strong anti-spy stuff. I will invite you to my faction soon. Sure, you can join. Can I help you in time? Possible, but unlikely. But if I attack a bit... Can we see success against the Soviets? A bit. Maybe we, if we go cautious. I don't want losses. We can't really afford high losses. Okay, we are making some progress. But it's probably not too smart to go on the offensive here. Let's see. Yeah, we are losing a lot. Perhaps we should stop. Hold and only attack if the cautious setup allows it. Nope, still losing too much. Stop your attacks, possibly once you've taken some territory. And again, maybe I can afford that. Let's do total mobilization, women in the workforce, war propaganda, and service by requirement. Delay, deploy troops, that's our new army group. Field Marshal, the one who should have received a different trait, will lead it. And you guys will help our allies. Go to Turkey, right, and everyone be cautious. 
Two armies can go over to Finland and cautiously advance. It's not a good idea to advance now, but... Well, maybe not even advance, just hold the line. Make sure our friends don't get conquered. Spies already getting captured and killed. That is quick. I really kind of want to advance, but I know it's stupid. But keeping our allies safe is another matter. We'll see if it's even possible. Well, for Turkey it surely is possible, but I'm not sure about Finland. Also, it'll take them forever to get there. Army maneuvers. Oh, this is good. We need to get to this one. Home defense. And let's go. Okay, we have pushed the Soviets a bit and now they're attacking, which is perfect. We want them to attack us. We will defend easily, they will have heavy losses and we will gain army experience. About here. Looking good. You guys are on your way. I'm not sure Finland can make it. They just don't have enough troops. No skills. Yet another field marshal. Okay, now this is looking good. Maybe it's good we provoked them. Or maybe they would have started attacking anyway. Mobile defense. Logistics. We're fine. We're missing planes. But I'm planning to add anti-air to our units soon. Let's do anti-democratic and anti-fascist raid because we have extra political power. And it is going to give us some extra stability. Not a lot, just a little bit. Norway capitulates. Finland is still there. Whoa, not for long apparently. Well, maybe Finland will survive. Actually... I should probably push a bit in Finland because the Soviets don't have supply here. Let's push a bit, cautiously. And observe casualties. Might have been a bad idea. When we can become spy master, let's do that. Why are you guys not going where you're supposed to? Is that a supply situation? Right, I'm going to stop their attack and put them on balance. So then maybe they'll just reach their destination at least. And just try to hold Finland. This way all those Soviet forces will be going to waste up here. Although I will cautiously push with the forces in Turkey. Home defense. We will not give up Bessarabia, of course. Italy attacks Greece. Do we have to push back in Turkey? Or do we just leave it? Romania rejects Soviet demands. We're not Romania. Try and attack here. Nope, not gonna work. Well, we can take this bit. Stop, do not advance. But go to balance so we can move around properly. And that is an invasion. I do have armies in reserve. I could send one to garrison the reports. Are the Soviets still attacking? They are not. Okay then. Now we have to strengthen our forces and then we can push back. Hmm, we can do war bonds. Can I build a supply depot in your territory? I can. Also, some more military factories at home. No, uh, which ones were core territories? All of that. Okay, first a bit of infrastructure. And then some military industry. More spies. See, keeping them all this far away seems to be working, at least partially. Let's free our operative. I did send guys to hold the ports. Why are you too slow? What the hell happened here? They were assigned to just garrison the ports, so why are they attacking Soviet troops? I'll just put them on the front line and see if it works. At least the ones I sent to Turkey seem to be doing fine, although many are getting killed. Perhaps getting military access to Bulgaria would remedy that. We might need to evacuate from Finland. Finland seems to be a lost cause. For some reason my troops did not follow their orders. And Finland capitulated. So I lost two armies trying to defend them, which was a big mistake. On the other hand, the Germans have just attacked the Soviet Union. So we're gonna win against the Soviets, but we did lose a lot of troops. Let's try and maybe connect the territory so my troops can retreat. Run away quickly, please. We got a bonus to infantry weapons. Let's immediately use that on the best guns. Agent captured yet another one. Well, at least we have four now. Seems like I'll manage to save around half of the troops I sent up here. Maybe even more than that. You know what, I could mount a counter-offensive. We do have a port. How can I recover manpower just by switching out to the small unit? You are supplied, so it might be possible. Yes, yes, I can. Let's do that. Send them home this way. We are in friendly territory, after all. Are the Germans going to take my territory? Let's push. 
I was hoping to add anti-air to my troops and all that before we pushed, but uh, the opportunity presents itself, so let's use it. Do we have quite a lot of support equipment? Let's see. Yeah, we have enough. Let's increase support equipment production. This is relatively well defended, so let's ignore that front. Now commence the attack. Sending my agents back to the Soviet Union. Prepare collaboration governments. This is going to make them surrender easier. And this is progressing nicely. What is my participation? 46%. And already an agent has been captured. See, the Soviets have very good counterintelligence. Very good. Another agent captured. Yeah. That's the Soviet Union for you. We've decrypted the Soviet cipher. Time to use it. And go aggressive for a moment. This is going very well. We can all the entire for now. Ooh. That's a very experienced infantry unit. Go to the front lines. And as usual, nobody went to Crimea. Right, do we have anyone who's ready to act? Yes, we do. This army here. Go over to Crimea and handle them there. Normally, aggressive means very high losses, but we're doing well. Maybe I should keep it up. Operatives have been rescued. Definitely need more support equipment. Oh, and we just got one agent captured and another killed. Should probably go back to balanced. Going into Crimea. Right, let's switch to balanced. Losses are too high. Agent captured, I'm so surprised. Only one remains. <laughs> now we can improve work conditions and do raids. Let's do all that and war support. We have war support, but if we were in an aggressive war, it wouldn't be 100%. My network's deteriorating, sadly. But we're about to get an operative. Well, that's a nice incursion. How did that happen? Ah, the Turks. Frontlines always disappear in Crimea. Okay, that's all we wanted from here. I suppose we can do some air research. Finally, got my operatives back. Maybe some of them will survive this time. Go on a mission for a collaboration government. Oh, the Germans to Leningrad. But we will take Moscow. And Stalingrad. Agent captured. Again. Going well enough. And it is time to activate the army down in Turkey. Your turn. They will be pushed from the other side as well. And supply is not their friend. The Soviet army doesn't really have supply here. Our artillery boost. How are the logistics? Fine. I need more support equipment, but for now we are okay. Those Soviet troops are desperate and will all be killed. Maybe I can just cut them off completely. Next doctrine. How are the spies? On missions. Stalingrad. Will we finally get something? Yes, we got Stalingrad. That is something. You finish these guys off. Cleaning up here. We are 77% towards capitulation and we are about to finish a collaboration government mission, which might just push them over the threshold. Oh, and the cipher is decrypted. Perfect timing. Activate the cipher, please. Agent killed. Yeah, NKVD is doing its job. Maybe we'll get a German this time. We have researched and the best guns. Let's start making them. Will they capitulate once this is done? Next doctrine. Another agent captured. And the mission has been completed. How far from capitulation? Seems like the Coalition government didn't really do anything. Level 6. Nice. Do we have anything to give you? Not really, no. Not yet. Okay, let's go slowly. Get the German this time. Might come in handy later. Supply seems to not be the best here. But well, it's not really stopping anyone, is it? Japan attacks Dutch East Indies. United States joined the war. I need concentrated industry 5, even though it's ahead of time by a lot. Because I'm running out of good factory space. Hey Turkey, do you want to give me territory? You do, just not all of it. You know what, the supply is so bad I just need to go aggressive probably. Just so they wouldn't worry about supply and just go. Well, let's wait for the cipher to do that. But again, I could just repeat the collaboration government twice and I'll surrender with where we're at now, probably. If I were to add signal companies, would I have enough equipment? Yes, more or less, I would. More trucks? Definitely. Let's add that. And maybe wait for them to reinforce before we push again. Logistics companies would be helpful here, but we're almost done with the war. And I haven't really researched them. Oh, logistics specialist, finally. Wouldn't want to win before this operation finishes. So let's wait, and when it's done, I can push. I could just buy fighters. 
with the competition thing from say UK rather than research my own. Maybe I should. Some more raids just because we have too much political power and not enough stability. And more war propaganda because when we go on the offense we want to stay at 100%. Let's see if they surrender when the operation finishes. And they're not surrendering yet. 75 collaboration is enough. Let's just push. So we need to do a cipher and put the army on aggressive. And that should finish the Soviet Union very quickly. Go! And we'll have 75% collaboration there, which is a lot. Agent captured. Yeah, let's help him. Cancel the preparation of the collaboration government though. Should we do that? No, this is not going as well as I thought. Maybe the collaboration government will still be necessary. Let's do a fighter competition and see what happens. I'm curious. Logistics all good. Oh, the operation started already. Well, I guess I can let it finish. Go back to balanced. If you want to push, you'll push. Hold for now, though. Because if the third operation finishes, I'll have 100% collaboration everywhere in the Soviet Union. And that is worth a lot. So I can wait two more months. About enough time to get the cipher going again. For Hong Kong, not my problem. Looking good, but we're not looking like the most powerful country in the world at the moment. And we're not. But that will change. Agent. Captured. Okay, fighter competition. Small light interceptor, please. Who do we want it from? Britain, maybe. Because we're going to be fighting Germany. Production can commence at any time. Let's see if it really can. It can. Spitfire Mark 1. Fighter 2. This is decent. Do we want bombers? Maybe we can get cast from this. Let's see. War bonds. For Rome? Really? Well, yet another reason to fight the Axis. Okay, 41 days and we do the final push on the Soviet Union. I guess I can actually build a supply hub or two in the area. That will help our forces tremendously. Maybe three even. I guess I'll build some infrastructure in the places with the most resources. So our factories have something to do. Oh, Italy's about to die. Well, good, killing Germany will be even easier with that. Although I would like to take Bulgaria for myself, I might take them out too. 23 days. Four days for the collaboration government operation. Let's see if it'll lead to an instant surrender by the Soviet Union. I don't think it will. It does not. Not a problem. We have full collaboration now. So what we're going to do is activate the cipher. Is my supply route ready? No, it is not. But nevertheless, we have to advance. I know we don't have supplies. Forage for berries and stuff like that. I guess the supply house won't be needed anymore. Small bomber. Is it going to be a tactical bomber or is it going to be a CAS thingy? CAS! Perfect! This is a very neat event. I would guess we can produce some once we're done with the war. Let's do construction engineering. Iranian Communist Authority. And they joined the war? Here we go. Iran, you're mine. Let's be super aggressive so we can get something before this war is over. No, Turkey, I don't need expeditionary forces. How far from capitulation is the Soviet Union? 98% towards capitulation. And Germany couldn't help them because they couldn't connect here. No, they could go through Vichy France. They chose not to, apparently. I ran out of stuff to build. Well, we're going to be fighting the Germans next, so let's make sure we have enough supplies there. Looks like we do. How about infrastructure? I guess I'll just have to build factories in the territories we've conquered earlier. Should we build good roads there? Yes, they'll like us more. And then we'll move to Russia and build stuff there because collaboration government. We have 57% participation in the war. And 100%. They should surrender now. There we go. Soviet Union capitulates. Who is in it? Finland is, is here as a victim, but they were my ally. We're the first to pick. We can try if I can manage to cut the Germans off. They won't be able to take anything. This is expensive to me. So I guess what I'll do is pass the first round. Let them take some stuff. Okay, now we should be able to stop them. They did not take Moscow. Good. Um, but they will. Because it's too expensive to me. Anyways, um, we should be able to block them now. Hmm, Iran is very cheap. Extra oil. All the coasts. We don't want Turkey taking anything either, so let's take these two. The south is secured. 
Essentially, if you take all the coasts and all the territories that are bordering the Germans, the Germans should take absolutely nothing. But all these territories are very expensive to me, and I don't think I'll be able to block them. Well, one thing I could have done was uh, to puppet the Soviet Union. Then all this territory would be much cheaper. Since we have such great collaboration, I wanted to hold the territory myself, which um, blinded me with greed. can almost block them. Okay, let's end the turn with this. They'll take Leningrad, that's fine. Oh, they're going for the Baltic countries, good. Okay, that should block them. Can we also get some Finland? Well, we can get the island. Oh, Germany puppeted Iran. I was too slow taking territory from them. I did not expect them to do it, but that's not really a problem. Iran took some Iran, but we'll block it and conquer it later. The rest is mine. They took 44 states, which is a lot. We only have 300 factories. Uh, let's see, we have collaboration at 100%, so in a few days pass, what will happen? No, we don't want a provisional government. 379 factories, that's a bit better. Oh, there's a lot of unrest here. Seems like the Germans were not taking good care of the population, such a surprise. Austro-Hungary, pretty big, isn't it? Now it's time to take care of the Germans, but before we do that... As a sign of solidarity, let's release the Republic of Ukraine as our puppet. This way they will be non-aligned. We'll get some more territory from Germany soon. Now let's prepare an army to kill the Germans. Because we can. We did get some supplies from the Soviets. Not a huge amount, but a sufficient amount. Alright, fill the armies up. Two full army groups will do the trick. And one army to guard our ports. But we have considerably more ports now. Because I can also include Turkey in this. When we're directly fighting the Germans, naval invasions should not be a problem. And these territories here will ignore. Just the ports, please. And now we need to train some more troops. Not a lot, just a hundred will suffice. And then we can start building factories. In what used to be the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union is no more. So yeah, let's get ready to kill the Germans. We got the train to get back home. Our main army will, of course, just go to the German border, get in position, train up, and all that. While our secondary army will attack on other fronts like Bulgaria, Persia, and those little bits of territory we have around Germany, maybe. As well as... this is all of Italy, right? So those two bits of Italy, maybe. Oh, there's a third bit, their capital. All of you use the right template, and when you do... We'll have to check on the logistics. Okay, that's a lot of support equipment. More than needed. I should change the picture on that. The Clover. Why not? I'm going to add anti-air. And produce some of that too. Obviously I need a lot of anti-air. Let's start making that. 70 factories cause I can afford it. The rest looks fine. Let's make some planes as well. Now trade. We won't be trading with Germany anymore. Oh, Sweden has steel to sell. Good. Let's split that between Sweden and Turkey. Now, supply situation. You take Bulgaria. Two for the new Persian Empire. One for Italy and to be relocated later. And since I will be attacking Germany directly, should I do that? Because I think Japan will join. Now we do bother each other. They are guaranteeing the independence of Vichy France. I could just attack France. We can get everyone to exercise in the meantime. And produce enough anti-air for everybody. Yes, let's call out the French oppressors. Also, I have to manage the air force somehow. Ah, concentrated industry, finally. We can build stuff in the places that are suitable for it. That is our core territory. Finish the ones you're building already. And then we go. This army has no orders. I'll send them... Over here. Go into the heart of Germany. Oh, Bulgaria capitulated. That frees up an army. They'll intensify the attack here. Oh, I am making enough anti-air, but they're also exercising and they're using it up. So I'm not making enough anti-air. 80 factories. And reduce the planes. I don't need that many. All oh, right, I can buy steel from Ukraine. Let's do that. And the United States. Vichy France joined Axis. UK declared war on them. That's fine. Just make sure to not take the bit I'm justifying on. It's over here. Can you hold out for 40 days? 
I do hope so. Civil War in Turkey, really? Uh, let's ignore that. Iran's been taken over. Two more armies that have nothing to do. Stop the exercise. Cancel whatever you were doing. I guess I'll just take this bit and then do another Field Marshal level order for them. Let's add some more orders for them. Get in position and then we can attack. Yeah, right, planes. Should I deploy some more? Let's maybe merge on the wings as much as possible. How many as all should I cover? Definitely these three. Maybe these two will suffice. And that will do for air support. Make sure to redeploy strategically. And I guess we're ready to fight. These troops will arrive later and reinforce. There's no need for them to be there at the moment. Let's make our empire a bit bigger. Declare war on Vichy France. Now Germany should join. Iceland has joined, Italy has joined. Oh, so we can fight Italy actually here. How about Germany? Germany has been called in. They're not even defending the area. I'm just gonna put everyone on aggressive. I'm not sure if they are not prepared because I'm attacking Vichy France. Well, they just did not expect me to be aggressive towards them. Oh, I forgot to call in Ukraine. Let's do that too. And the cipher. We could activate the Italian one, but let's humiliate them by not even using it. Okay, good. They are sending some troops to defend, but it's way too late. Fully upgraded units are indeed very powerful. Well, on the other hand, they didn't really have enough time to prepare a defense, but being honest, that would not have helped. Not if we have... I know it's just infantry, but infantry with full support, anti-air and artillery. And that's actually a lot of attack on that. My participation in the war will be very small because they've been fighting it for a long time, but let's not kid ourselves, they would not win without me. Right, this army is free. Let's send it here with the mission to make our borders look nice. So, um, yeah, we took like half of German cores already. Are they really focusing on defending this area? No, no, there's defenses everywhere, just not strong enough. And Berlin. I could do a manual attack on Berlin, but... Oh, Iraq. Do we have an army ready to take on Iraq? We almost do. Let's take the garrison. I don't need to guard against naval invasions. Maybe you can take Iraq for me. Go take Iraq. So look at Germany. There is some resistance. The cipher ended. Okay, it's pretty obvious we're winning. Could use more anti am, but apart from that, we're fine. Okay, separated these guys out. Uh, the more troops are here and the less are in Germany, the better. Because to win, we just need their core territories. They are still very far from capitulation. So the attack is not as smooth as I would like, but we're making consistent progress everywhere. Is Iraq alive? Still, yes. I am going to mess with the orders. You go here, you go here. Cancel all your orders, everyone. And all of this army goes to main Germany. And the other army group goes to the bit in the north. There might be some chaos with the transition, but it will be fine. We have too much territory to worry about that. This will give the main front some reinforcements. Iraq capitulates. It gives me an extra army to commandeer. Send over here. Also, collaborations. Ah, German South is decrypted. And go aggressive, please. They've definitely consolidated their defense, but uh, even with this push, I should get at least a few provinces. And if we repeat that a couple of times, they are done for. We do have enough firepower for it. Nearing Berlin. The cipher uh, will run out soon, but I think we'll continue on aggressive because we are about to beat them, I think. How's the operation? 25 days. Oh, did I really run out of manpower? I did not expect that. Let's do all adults serve immediately. Well, that's the cost of going full aggressive, I suppose. Now, let's see if we can take Berlin in this push. It's theoretically a possibility if I can stop reinforcements. If I attack these three tiles, Berlin should be separated from them totally or just from getting reinforcements. You attack here and they're retreating from Berlin. Is that enough to make them capitulate? It is not, of course, but they're 84% towards it. All oh, right, this is core as well, I forgot. Now, in five days the operation finishes, and it might be that. Strassund, extra points as well. 
Oh, those Germans are so resilient. But we got Berlin, that's what matters. Now, just a couple more. Croatian government completed. But the surrender threshold... Oh no, it did move 95% towards it. So we're almost there. Rush Hamburg, maybe someone will succeed. Same for you guys and Königsberg. Will that work? It will not. Yeah, I'm out of manpower. So I can try and push very, very hard to finish them off quickly, or I could become a little more defensive for a moment. At least until I get the cipher again. I guess we have the best chance at Rostock. Oh, we got Hamburg. That's it. Liberation of Paris. Yeah, that's fine. And the peace conference. Here it is. Let's make our borders look neat, shall we? Do we want any subjects? Oh, I guess I can return course to Ukraine. I don't remember what their flag is in the game. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's just their flag. Okay, that'll do. So we puppet Poland, Germany, Italy and Vichy France. Sure, Iraq as well, why not? And Luxembourg, because we can. Actually, I'm just gonna take some stuff myself. We can sell out Albania. Hmm, too expensive. Looks like I'm gonna have to pass a bit. Give Italy to Italy. And give Germany to Germany. Now, is that all the territories? No, not all of them. Is that all the territory? Yes, it is. Let's see. Ah, glorious border gore. Probably should have satellited the Baltic countries. Let's wait a bit until everything stabilizes. But why did I make so many weird looking puppets? Well, the answer is right here. Let's go to the factions map load and... Hungarian puppets. I could have done a better job, in retrospect. But we are now the most powerful nation in the world, I think. Although the Allies could still pose a threat, but after some build-up, we would be able to deal with them. Now what would I do if I continued? I think we would have to attack some neutral countries that would not be defended by the Allies, like for example Spain, and deal with Japan. Japan would now be easy because they would be fighting us and also the Allies. In the meantime, we could take out some communists like Mongolia and Tanutuva. After taking over Japan and puppeting them like we did Italy, so that we would get their fleet, we could finally face the Allies. Now, facing the Allies is mostly problematic because we have to go to North America, but we could go from here. It would be a hassle, though. Alternatively, I could land in Central America and move up. Are there any good targets here I could safely invade? Yes, El Salvador is fascist. Nobody would defend them. And from El Salvador, we could move into Mexico and then United States. France would not pose a threat, or the Benelux or anything here. Uh, Britain, though, this could be difficult to invade them. But we have a huge industry, so I could just outproduce them and bomb them into extinction or destroy their fleet with planes and then invade. So the United States would be the biggest problem. Nevertheless, I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed it. And Austro-Hungary is still very much viable. In Nostra back zone, not much changed here. I expected as much, but wanted to play it again. That is it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.